Look, during this edition, we've been uh, taking a listen to a press conference that's currently underway here in the French capital, a press conference with the French-Israeli families of hostages uh, taken by Hamas on October the 2nd. Uh, let's listen. To bring back the 240 abductees, we don't have future in this world. The Western world won't exist. So please, thank you so much for... Uh, um, having us and listening to us, it's so important for us, and we are, please help us. Hi, my name is Daniel, Daniel Toledano. Um, I'm the brother of uh, Elia Toledano, he's 27 years old. Um, he just went to a party, that's all, that's all it, that's all it does. He went to a party with with a friend. You know, you know him. You saw you saw her, uh, Mia Shem, and this is all he do. And now, now from all we know, he hold in in Gaza, in the hand of Hamas. And I I I want to tell you something about what what they been through. So they saw many many their friends dead there, shot, killed injured but they managed to escape they managed to escape like 30 35 minutes and i know that because it they text me all the time i have records that the 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 crime the crime for help what to do what what and and they managed to escape but after 30, uh, 35 minutes um the terrorist ambushed him in the in in some in some place and they shot, they shot the car, and I know that because I found the car. The car right now is totally burned, and all the left, all the right side is shot, like I think seven, seven, eight um, holes. And after that, I don't know nothing. So the Israeli intelligence told me that they know that in Gaza, but we can never know because the the Hamas don't don't speak, don't say if 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 anyone alive. So what I'm asking you, what we're asking you right now is to to think what what you what you could do if you if you stay in this position that that you know that it's fifty percent that your loved one is is dead and fifty percent that is alive. What do you think you can do? So we think, and of course we can stay at our home and cry and, and, and stay, stay worried, but we choose to come here to speak with each one of you and try to, 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 let, to let us know, to let you know about our story and do in all your power to change your family opinion and your, your city opinion. And by that, we can change our situation and we bring them, we bring them home. We bring them home and even, even before that, maybe we manage. And I'm sure, and I, I'm sure that by your help and anyone's help, we can manage to maybe at least um, enter the Red Cross to just just check what about them if they live if they injured because that's the minimum we can we can get and we know and we know that you can help us thank you thank you um, on october 7th a terrible massacre has occurred in israel over a thousand Hamas and jihadic Islamic terrorists invaded Israel. They butchered, killed, slaughtered, raped thousands, over 1,400 casualties. They tortured families. They maimed and decapitated children. They forced family members to see how the other members of the family are tortured to death. These unspeakable crimes 
are the worst face of, face of evil that we can imagine. These acts are sheer crimes against humanity. And every human being, every person who cares about humanity, not more than that, should demand, demand the most urgent actions. First of all, condemn, condemnation and saying the truth out loud, Hamas, ISIS, should be erased from the face of the planet. We cannot live with these kind of monsters. And every country, every person who loves humanity has to act towards that. Israel indeed has not only the right, as the, but has the uh, necessity, the moral necessity, to defend itself and to demand justice against jihadic Hamas. And this is what we seek. And above all, above all, you heard today several representatives of at least 240 people that were kidnapped, brutally kidnapped, from their homes while they were sleeping on Shabbat, the day of rest for the Israelis, for the Jews. Some of them, babies, small children, the youngest of is nine months old. Several very, very small and young children. We have one of the videos that were photoed by the monsters of Hamas, hearing a 12-year-old child saying in this, the last thing we heard from him, please don't take me, I'm too young, in a naive and uh, world that he lived before October 7th. And we know that we face many challenges, but we request first and foremost from each and every part of the entire human community, help us free, free, fast, every day, the 240 uh, kidnappers. You heard our uh, representatives, they are part of the family that are able to speak. We have mothers, fathers who have all their children kidnapped and they don't know, know nothing where they are. They can't even talk. We are the voices. You should be the voices and no spare no effort. Please spare no effort. I can go on with the legal argument, but I don't think that I need to persuade anyone who's seeing us that these, actu these actions and crimes are crimes against humanity. We should defend and first and foremost call for immediate release, immediate release of all of the authors. Before anything else, this is the most important thing we can do, and I urge each and everyone uh, to, do to do so. Thank you. Merci d'avoir écouté. Et nous allons passer aux questions. Et je pense qu'il sera plus facile et de le poser directement en anglais. We're actually start trying to think about, about a loved one, about our families, what we can do, what you can do. What the government do, it's her business, and I think the government know what to do. And if they do what they do, maybe it's what they need to do. But everyone need to think what you can do. I think about what I can do, and I hope that you think about what you can do for us. So it's not, it's not busy in our mind. Um, I would like to say that I feel that priority should be first bring back the hostages before anything else. It should be the only thing at the table right now. It doesn't feel like that is the sentiment that the Israeli government is leading. And I can only speak for myself, but um, 
I want them back home first. Anything else follows. Nothing else matters at the moment. Just to do a follow-up, I work for a French daily government. So personally, you think that your government isn't doing enough to get the hostages back home? Or is the method is they're using is not a good one? I am sure that the Israeli government is doing a lot in its power. There are many things that I guess are confidential and we are not aware of that they are doing. But I do know that publicly what Israel government is uh, stating is not prioritizing the hostages first. And that is something that is unacceptable in my eyes. Uh, a follow-up, uh, Clovis Castelli, France 24. Mm -hmm. You were speaking about the Red Cross going in. <clears throat> Did you mean that you were calling also maybe for a humanitarian pause in order to help bring back the hostages? About the Red Cross, I've been in a couple of meeting, meetings with the Red Cross and um, we talked with them, but they still don't have any connection to the um, abductees, at least what we know. Um, and we are trying to ask them more, to do more, and to bring us at least um, a proof of life from the abductees, because this is so important for us to know if our families is alive and who is not. Um, but I think that the Red Cross should do more than than it does uh, right now. I want to add on that, please. The Red Cross. Is not doing enough, period. They, we saw them in many, many times, very much more active than what they, than what they do today in the, our case. Um, we are very disappointed. I am personally uh, am disappointed from, from that. I think that they need to put a lot of pressure, just like they do in other cases. And just like they know how to advocate for uh, human aid, there is nothing more human than demanding, not asking, not requesting, knocking on the doors of Hamas in the borders of Gaza, saying we want to get in to see where our babies are. We want to know where the babies are and, and we know where and the, the uh, Holocaust survivors are, old people that need of medicine. Demand, like they can demand in other play, uh, cases. This is the normal human request and we expect nothing less than that from the Red Cross. Now, while Israel might and does uh, allow civil population in safe havens in the south of Gaza, and, uh, and while the uh, Red Cross are caring and should care about uh, uh, human tragedies, they first and foremost have to demand. It's, a human, uh, and it's nothing political. It's only being a human being. Release the, the hostages and first and foremost see that they are alive and ma make sure that they are safe and have their medicine. And babies have their formulas. That's what I expect from the Red Cross. Please forward this public tragedy news, the liberation. You are today in Paris. Do you expect something special from the French government, please? I think as we expect from all the world, um, we expect f from the French government to support us and to understand that this is not just our fight, this is the world fight. Um, we're talking about a crime against humanity and we really need the world to pressure those countries that support this terror organization, that support the, ab the abducted of people from their home, from a party, the, and I'm, I'm not talking about the others that were um, murdered, we're talking about 1,400 people that were murdered. My sister, she went with her friends, four of her childhood friends, they're all been murdered, and, now, and she's missing. And we expect from the French government to help us and to pressure those countries and not to um, not to sit with those countries until they will bring our families home. And we're talking about Qatar. 
that can influence Hamas and the Hamas is sitting there and we're talking about Turkey and Iran and other countries or other organizations that support the Hamas should be condemned because if they are supporting the Hamas, they are helping the terror in the world. And I think that the French government should do that. That's what we, I think. And I think all, all the others are agree, but I don't know. If you permit me to respond to your question as a French and a family of de personnes décédées et d'otages franco-israéliens. Euh, elles, ce sont mes, mes cousines, euh, elles ont été très touchées et émues des, des visites de, de parlementaires français. You've been watching uh, France 24 and we've been listening in to a, a press conference with the French-Israeli families of hostages that were taken uh, by Hamas. Uh, Rob, we've been watching uh, this press conference uh, here in the studio. Ultimately, there are clear some uh, divisions calling on the French government to really do more, to add pressure on the international community to bring uh, loved ones home. Yeah, I mean, the, the impression, the overriding impression you get from listening to these people is just how desperate they are. You know, they're, they're, they don't know who to turn to for help. They're, they're just reaching out for anybody to give them help. You know, they want the French government to help them. They want the French government to put pressure on Qatar because Qatar has links with Hamas. Uh, it, just asking them to do the maximum that they can do. They want the Israeli government to pull back, the, desperately pleading with the Israeli government to put the hostages first, settle the hostages question before anything else, before moving into an operation against Hamas. The Israeli government, for its part, has already made absolutely clear, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, yesterday, that it's not going to happen like that. The Israeli government is going to go in after Hamas, put as much pressure militarily on Hamas as possible, and hope that they release the hostages, because it believes that there is no other way that Hamas will release hostages. Uh, they are appealing to the International Red Cross, accusing the Red Cross of not doing enough, of standing back and not knocking on the doors of people who know Hamas and being more active in, in uh, Gaza. You know, whether it's true or not, uh, you, know, you can just feel their desperation. These are people who, who have relatives who are either dead or missing some kind some cases they they don't know whether they're dead or missing some may be held by uh, the hamas in gaza they're absolutely desperate uh, they've they've seen what happened to the the people who were so brutally murdered on october the 7th and they're fearful those that think that they they have relatives uh, in gaza that they may be maybe being treated awfully uh, so one can feel their desperation